Hey, what's up? This is Sully from Godsmack. Strap on those boots, baby, because you are now in the trenches of the war room with the one and only Mistress Carrie right here on the Mistress Carrie podcast. Hey, it's Mistress Carrie reporting for duty from MCHQ for your second Cocktails in the War Room after action report. In case you didn't know, every Tuesday night at 8.30, live on my Facebook page, I host a show called Cocktails in the War Room. Now, the War Room is an actual room in my house. It's filled with military memorabilia from different members of my family and friends in their service, and it's also filled with all of the stuff that I brought back from overseas when I was embedded with troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. On March 14th of 2020, I started going live from the war room to help get me through being quarantined in the house during the coronavirus. We did 81 nights in a row. And now it's a weekly show at 830 live on Facebook. And the war room is more than just a show. It's a family. It's a community. It's a place where we all come together, disregard our differences and help support each other and try and laugh through the craziness that we call life. And we have a cocktail. But you don't need to drink to come into the war room. Sometimes we do mocktails in the war room. And sometimes we call a Temple Tuesday when we enjoy Shirley Temples so we can be more inclusive. Shirley Temples are delicious. And now that the Mistress Carrie podcast is completely established, you get new episodes every Wednesday. And I talk to all kinds of interesting people. But then sometimes... People join us live in the war room. So what I'm going to start doing is taking the audio from those visits in the war room and putting it up on here as a podcast episode, a bonus podcast episode. I want the war room to grow. So you can watch it live on the Mistress Carrie Facebook page every Tuesday night at 830 Boston time. But if you can't tune in live, the videos are always posted after the fact on my Facebook page and on the official Mistress Carrie YouTube channel. And if you miss the special guest that way, you get an after action report. This past Tuesday, July 14th, one of my favorite singers from one of my favorite new bands popped by the war room to check in and see what's going on. Mark LaBelle from Dirty Honey has been holed up in California because of the coronavirus. But the band is hard at work on their suitcase sessions, working on new music, and they have a new upcoming live streaming concert. So he called, or should I say checked in on the war room, to fill us in on all of that, talk about how he's handling the virus on the West Coast, to talk a little smack about hockey, to meet my pug Wednesday, and to enjoy some tequila. So here is Mark LaBelle from Dirty Honey, on Cocktails in the War Room. Cheers. Thank you guys for joining me each and every Tuesday night. And there is a hard and fast rule in show business mm. that says that you are not supposed to follow animal acts or children. And my guest tonight is going to do just that because he has the unfortunate instance of having to follow Wednesday the goth pug. I want to make you guys... Give a warm cocktails in the war room. Welcome to Mark LaBelle from Dirty Honey. Hey. How are you? There we go. Cheers to you. How you holding up um, out there? I am uh, drinking tequila on a Tuesday, so that's always good. <laughs> well, <laughs> listen, uh, the war room did 81 episodes in a row. And yeah. so we were um, drinking every oh, night of the week. Days. Well, 81 weeks in a row. Yeah, that happens. 81 days in a row, yeah. We did 81 days in a row, and every once in a while, would we we declare like a mocktails in the war room to give our livers a break, or like yeah. um, we would do Temple Tuesday sometimes, um, where we would drink Shirley Temples to kind of just really keep ourselves from just, just going off the rails fully, but... It's probably worse for you anyway, all the sugar, but I'm very happy to be episode 87 because hockey is coming back. And 87 is the number of my favorite player that I know you aren't very fond of, <laughs> and Sidney Crosby. So <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a happy camper right now. Listen, I don't despise Sid the Kid. It's just that I'm a homer. So I support you New England and Boston hometown teams. So I might hate him right now, but if the Bruins got him, you know, guess whose jersey yeah. I'm wearing? That's how it mm -hmm. is. 
We'd be repping 87 all over town. That's so. right. Um, you are in California right now. Yes. And the uh, lockdowns and all of that stuff has gone into full effect again. How are you holding up with everything? It's not quite as um, locked down, I guess, as it was maybe early April. Um, so it's kind of okay, but I think people are actually being a little bit more respectful now about wearing masks outside. And I don't know, it's, it was nice. Last week, the gym opened up in my building again, and I was able to work out. Just It felt somewhat normal again, and then, bam, they took that away. The hockey rinks were open. And that it just all ended again yesterday. So uh, there is so much hockey hate in the comments right now. Crosby's yeah. a puss. Crosby's a baby. We despise him, though, says Eric. Um, the ring. Bend the knee. Crosby says Carrie. That's right, girl. Rep the hometown says Wendy. Yeah. I mean, hey, there's there's not a better meme out on the NHL uh, uh, platforms right now than Brad Marchand just crying at the end of game seven last year. So, you know, you don't have one for Sid like that. Uh, well, we're not going to talk oh. about last year. We're just not going to, we're just, we're just going to, we're going to try and look, we, I don't even know where to start because it's I love been, hockey. Dude. I don't care who's playing. I'm, I'm excited to watch hockey all the time. I, I, I love that you're a hockey watch. fan. Yeah, I'm a big hockey fan. So. And, and it's, it's been incredibly hard everywhere with, the coronavirus and everything, but Boston, like we didn't just get like grazed in the nuts. Like we got squarely kicked multiple times going all the way back to what you and I were just talking about off camera a few minutes ago, which was the loss of WAF. I mean, yeah. let's start there. Last year we get introduced to you guys and we start working on breaking all of these amazing new bands and thank you. We had all these plans with the big gig and all of this great stuff that we were going to do. Having you guys come in and play acoustic in the studio is what really made me fall in love with your band because I think anybody can sound good in the studio, but when you come in and strip it all down and do it live and not have any of the gadgets to make you sound good, that's when I knew, okay, these guys are seriously legit. That one was a particularly good one, too, because I think we were in the middle of the Alter Bridge tour then. And, you know, you're pretty tired being the first of three bands anyway, just all the time. You're just pretty run down. And it was just a fun atmosphere. It's the big rock station, obviously, in, in a huge city in America. And I don't know. We were all pretty pumped to do it. And I think we did we did two tunes. And um yeah, I just remember getting a lot of really great feedback. I have a lot of friends that live in Boston because um, I'm from not too far away. And like, well, you got a mass I'm, hole in the band too. Yeah, well, he's uh, act, yeah, he is sort of a mass hole, but he's technically a mainer at the same time. So, um, but yeah, I have like 25 people just hitting me up in the Boston area, like you're on AF right now. This is crazy. So uh, it was that was a particularly special radio performance for me. So. And the and and then, then we got to meet you. Of course. Oh, thank you. So that <laughs> that's been the joke that we use here in the war room all the time is that AAF going off the air kind of triggered the apocalypse because the world went from being fairly normal. I mean, weird, but normal. And then all of a sudden AAF was gone and yep. the world just got flipped upside down. And now we're all looking around like, where the fuck are we living now? Like nobody recognizes anything about what's going on anywhere. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Um, I've been doing quite a bit of just traveling around California, and uh, it's just it's just sad to see the the current state of the country. Like, you know, my parents were spending time in Florida, uh, you know, for the spring, and they got out of there like right when things turned the corner for the worst. Um, fortunately, they they got out of there, but. Um, it's just, it's just crazy right now. We can swear on here, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fucking... It's me, out of, it's do you out know of how many episodes it took me to get used to being able to say fuck? Oh, I spent 22 awesome. years on the air worried yeah. about the FCC and their fines, and now all of a sudden, I can say whatever fuck I it. want. Fuck it. 
Fuck it all. I can drink when I'm working. I heard my boss is yeah. a bitch, though, but whatever. <laughs> it's you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're uh, you have multi personality. Yeah, disorder. exactly. And yeah. and I've I've got like custom cocktails in the war room mugs now. Let me <laughs> tell you, the war room family is so amazing. We got locked down really early on. I know California kind of did it quickly and then started opening back up. But Massachusetts, we got serious really, really fast. And so spending all of this time in my house just kind of locked down with only the war room to talk to a lot of the time. Yeah. They kept me from really going crazy because otherwise I was starting to think Wednesday was talking back. I mean, it was getting to the point where it was like. She probably was if you drink enough or do enough drugs it'll definitely start dogs <laughs> so for but, uh, it's, so it's been it you know they they send me things like mugs and and they've been sending me metric fuck tons of pringles and twizzlers and stuff to keep me yeah. to keep me going and so you're locked down pretty much by yourself right like the band isn't locked down together in a house are you no but we definitely still get together and write and um, that was kind of a, we were supposed to go to Australia in late March, from late March to early April um, to do a record. And then obviously that didn't happen. They closed their borders. We closed our borders and, uh, you know, we just couldn't get out there to, to do it. And so we decided to take the time. We rented a space up in the valley and just started writing more material because we, we had like probably seven ideas we were really stoked about going into the studio with. And now there's probably twice that. So um, using the time we've been given effectively and efficiently has been, you know, important, you know, to, to just go in whenever we do get to go into the studio, we'll have a, a greater wealth of material to, to choose from. But um, we definitely haven't been wasting the time. That's that's for sure. You, but you guys started doing fun. some very cool stuff, though. You did these suitcase sessions where you kind of got out on the road and it's been really interesting following band social media accounts because like you're going into places around LA that would normally be hustle and bustle. And I mean, it's like an apocalypse movie, kind of some of the stuff that you guys were filming. Yeah. Especially downtown. Um, downtown LA is just, there used to be like the usual business hustle and bustle of, you know, just middle-class finance, you know, marketing people down there. And now it's just literally all homeless. It's literally apocalyptic down there. It reminds me of that movie uh, where they, everybody killing is like legal for. Oh, the purge. The purge. Yeah. Yeah. It's eerily like that um, down there right now. But yeah, we went out to uh, an area on the Eastern Sierra mountains called the Alabama Hills and did the first suitcase sessions, um, camped out for the night and, just shot this cool video because everybody was doing, you know, performances from their couch and, you know, it's cool, but I had already felt like artists doing that was already getting a little stale for me. You know, we're doing a show on our couches right now, right? Yeah, but it's, okay. it's effective for you. I'm saying, but like, I don't, I don't want to see a rock and roller. Like, I don't want to see, you know, just whoever, like just playing an acoustic guitar on their couch. It's cool. Yeah. The first 10 times, but but you, but you have LA as a backdrop that you can use right now. Yeah, we had LA. That was that was another one we did. We used um this this helipad up in Elysian Park. That was pretty cool. And then uh, but yeah, I think just getting out into nature and getting inspired right now is it's not only socially distant, but it's fun. It's you know it's inspiring and it's good use of the time. It's good exercise too. So. You guys did a really cool thing with Harley Davidson too, where you had some performances. Can you talk about that? Yeah, we um, time off to to you have mm -hmm. to you have to cheers the war room people when you drink. So, uh, salute. Yeah, the uh, the Harley thing was cool. We we had a studio um, friend, you know, in downtown LA again that um, was nice enough to open up for us like during lockdown, and we went in there and shot like this live stream. Um, just got to play a new song, got to, it was the first time we'd played together in, in almost a month. Um, so it was, it was fun, but again, like nothing can compare to that, like actual live show experience yeah. with bands. It's, you know, 
it's it's kind of weird, but we, we had a really good time. That was a fun, uh, just, just reminds you how much fun it is to play. So you guys are doing a show that's coming up and um, it's going to be live. And I, I want you to talk about how you pulled it off. I mean, you're doing a full on rock show during yeah. lockdown. So it's called yeah. Lockdown Live at the Viper Room. So tell us how you're doing that. Yeah, so uh, actually KLOS, the, the classic rock station here, has been super helpful with us too. And, um, you know, we're endlessly grateful to them because uh, there there isn't, I don't think there is an active rock station here. But um, they just came to us and they had this idea and they just wanted to do a show with with the band from live from the Viper Room. Um, we were like, hell yeah, let's do it. That sounds awesome. And then, you know, we have a little film team that we use for the suitcase sessions for the Harley Davidson stream we did um, for our Rolling Sevens music video. We're going to use those guys and yeah, we're going to do a full on rock show, play some new music uh, that we've been working on and we're going to play a little bit more to the camera, so to speak. Um, It'll feel I, like a rock show that we just yeah. kind of get to be vo- like almost like we're there, but not quite. Yeah. And I've been saying what's better than getting down and dirty in the comfort of your own home. Actually, it would be better to be at a show, I'm sure, but uh, yeah, that's the next best thing. Well, I mean, what we've all learned, and you got to love when you're doing a live show and your dog's fucking barking in the background. Wednesday! Very professional. It's, it's amazing how the <laughs> level, the quality level of production has gone down so low since the I virus. I think it's gone up. You think? <laughs> I, I, think don't, so. I don't know. <laughs> but... um. Really? I had the cheers to War Room. Yeah, well, no, I appreciate that. I'm talking about the fucking dog. She doesn't want to stop oh. barking. Um, I can't hear her. I, oh, oh, that's all I can hear over here. So the, um, the I forgot even what I was going to say. This is what happens when you start drinking, doing the show. So we we're talking about the Viper Room. I have all yeah. the details up on the screen. And um, it's going to be at 1030 here on the East Coast. People can go to dirtyhoney.veeps.com to get tickets because you guys are doing this kind of as a ticket based thing, which is how, I mean, as of right now, this is the new normal, right? Yeah. And, you know, like, it's not a secret that we're an unsigned band, right? So to sort of, I don't know, stay alive, we've got to, you know do something to earn a living, but, uh, you know, it's pretty important. It's nine 55 per ticket, I think. So, um, you know, it's not too bad. It'll be a nice little pay-per-view event that, uh, and I've heard the, the streaming service beeps is really good. So it's going to be an HD stream and, um, it'll be cool. We're really looking forward to it. And, And more than anything, um, just looking forward to playing with the boys, you know, loud, you know, we had this little rehearsal space that was, I don't know, maybe 12 by 12, you know, little box and just turning up the amps in in a tight, tight space like that. And the drums like being so loud is not ideal. So to be at a venue, to crank the amps all the way up and and to make some noise would be be fucking awesome. I'm pretty fun. Well, let's, can we talk about that for a second? Because Last year, you guys took the music business by storm. You were this unsigned, you did. You're this unsigned band that has a number one rock song. And it was the first time that had happened in like 45 years. And the excitement around this new wave of bands coming out. Last year, on the air, the listeners, everybody was so excited about this new generation of rock bands. Yeah. And then they get to come and see you live they, at the Palladium. We saw you when you were touring with um, Mark Tremonti and just like getting and being like, OK, this band is legit. And there's so much momentum. And you guys are doing it without this massive mechanism of a major label with all of the help that that can provide behind you. And so right. when something like this happens with the coronavirus and the lockdown, the guys in Metallica, like Axel and Slash, Kid Rock, like Steven Tyler, guys like that are fine. 
It sucks for them because their crews are all shut down and they definitely are not doing all of the shows and stuff that they had planned, the residencies in Vegas and all of that stuff. But there's this perception that if people go to a show and they see you on stage at a sold out show, that everyone kind of has that kind of rock star resource, whatever. And right. and this has hurt bands like you guys more than anybody because you guys were just getting going. Yeah. And, you know, especially at the early stage, you want to keep the train rolling, obviously. Um, to quote an Aerosmith song, uh, I think it's an old Yardbird song, actually. But, uh, yeah, you know, I... I I understand the mentality of people like Slash and Steven Tyler. Um, it sucks for everybody, not not just us. I mean, oh, it sucks. No, like, no. There, I'm not dogging them by any means. I'm just saying that no. they're at a level where yeah, they're financially secure. Financially, they're going to sure. be okay. But bands that are new, that are just getting rolling like Dirty Honey. Yeah, there's the bad flowers. There's dirty honey. There's dinosaur red, pile up, and there's uh, joyous wolf is another one. Um, you know, Marcus King, I really love to like. You know, there's this whole new wave of young rock and roll bands that are coming up that, um, you know, are yeah, they're they're building something, and you know, obviously it sucks to have it stop, but you know, I think the even worse situation to be in is to be a band like Green day who just put out a record and now right. they can't do anything um you know again green days they're going to be fine uh but they can go toward to thousands of people you know no matter what but ultimately the the bigger problem is that anybody that's doing this hopefully especially if you're steven tyler slash you're doing it now because you you still love doing it and right. something that you love is taken away from you it fucking sucks no matter what no matter you know, I'm sure Slash would pay 50 grand right now to go be able to play a show or, I bet or whatever. He would. I I'm bet sure he would. he would. That guy loves playing more than anything. So, um, yeah, it sucks for everybody, but to have the momentum come to a screeching halt is is not good. But uh, Well, the reason we'll why I bring it up is that, you know, you were one of these bands that at WAF we really wrapped our arms around. And AAF listeners were the most passionate, loyal Die hard, just amazing, wonderful gang of absolute rabid dogs that you've ever seen, which is why we're here right now, because they've been supporting me through all of my new endeavors now. And so what I want people to understand is if they love your band, they can really help by getting tickets to watch this live stream at the Viper Room because this is going to help the band continue that momentum forward. And For sure. if they're fans of yours, like get the show, hang out at home, kick back in your war room, put your feet up, make yourself a drink. Have a couple of drinks. I'm definitely going to be having some drinks that night. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> it's be like any other show, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a huge fun. thing for you guys. Yeah. It's a huge thing. And you know, we're going to be fine. I'm, I'm uh, very happy with the, the new stuff that we're, we're writing and I've kind of been somewhat containing my excitement the last Talk several weeks. Talk to me about months. that one new song that you guys did that I heard. Um, I don't know. I don't remember the name of it, but I heard the new well, song that you guys played online. Yeah. The wire. Okay. Yeah. It's a rocker. Um, yeah, it's just a fun, great riff that Nato, the guitar player, came up with. And, uh, you know, once you get the the lyrical content sort of just fell in my lap, scatting, you know, I've been walking your wire and just kind of the rest of the song writes itself pretty easily. So that one came about pretty quick. But, um, you know, I was having trouble with another tune on this record. I've had this great riff floating around for a long time and um, just needed to clear my head and get out of whatever headspace I was in. And I went up to Yosemite to go hiking in the national park. And it was literally like 24 hours after I got back from that trip, it's just something popped in and it's like, okay, the song's done now. Like we, we, and I'm very, very excited about it. So I'm excited to do the Viper room, excited to get into the studio. We have a couple shows coming up in August to um, out of state that we're going to do. And then, uh, and then I don't know what the rest of the year holds, but. 
a lot of people are asking if you guys are going to be able to come back and do the big gig in April. And right now, bands and promoters and tour managers, like everybody is just so nervous about committing to any kind of plans because nobody really knows what the world. I mean, we thought the big gig was going to happen in April and the arena where we were going to have it turned into a field hospital for COVID-19 oh, patients. Wow, really? So it was wow. like... Even if the lockdown hadn't happened, like we wouldn't have been able to have it at that arena because it got turned into a hospital. So yeah. we, we don't know what's what's going to happen yet because it's so far away. No. And, you know, like for me, I'm not. I'm respectful of the coronavirus. I wear a mask. I, I try and do the things you're supposed to do and be socially distant. I'm less concerned about myself if we were to go perform at a show and, and more concerned about the people in attendance because they're right on top of each other. Um, so, you know, we got to just, whenever the time comes, it's just got to be safe and, and nobody wants to be the guinea pig, uh, that goes out there and does the first show and then have, you know, thousands of people get coronavirus and die, you know, yeah. which is scary. Um, some people are asking me, are you guys going to make merch for this Viper Room show? Are you going to do custom shirts for that show? We do have some shirts going out. Uh, it's kind of like a collaboration with. Our logo, KLOS's logo, and the Viper Room. Um, so they're gonna be pretty cool. I've seen the this design; it looks pretty good. So uh, Amanda says she's following you guys on Spotify. Uh, John says, "Oh shit, 2020 virtual concert swag." I am in. He said. Uh, Mark says the wire is nice. up on YouTube Live, so you can check it out. That's what's awesome about the War Room is that I get this instant feedback, and people can ask questions and. It's pretty I awesome. It. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you're wearing an Aerosmith shirt. You and I have had extensive Aerosmith conversations. I want to have a conversation quickly about a guilty pleasure of mine that features Aerosmith because uh, okay. I have found the outer edges of on demand and Netflix and everything because there's nothing else to do but kind of hang out in the house and watch stuff most of the time. Yeah. Uh, what is your feeling on Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band? Have you seen it? And what did you think about it? I've never seen the movie. Yes. I've never seen <gasps> it. I just rewatched it yesterday. Aerosmith is in it. Aerosmith is in it. That's why they recorded Come Together because it's a movie they, about uh, Beatles. Stuff. Uh, I, I, I was actually just listening to Joe Perry's interview again on Howard Stern. He was talking about how they played the future villains in. Sorry, yeah. Um, it's free on demand right now. If you have cable, yeah, check that out now. it's free on demand. George Burns is in it. You have to look past Peter Frampton and the Bee Gees and their fashion because it was 1978. Yeah. But I'm watching this like Earth, Wind and Fires in it. And it was my favorite. From every great other artist of the. Uh, oh, it's era. it's unbelievable. Like when I was a kid. Like this, it was one of those movies that after it came out, like it was always on reruns and stuff. And so when I was a kid, it was like one of my favorite movies and i grew up as a child afraid of steven tyler because yeah. he goes after penny lane in the movie and so as i obviously got older and was like oh wait aerosmith is awesome that movie the tech i know you come from a film and tv background the production has not aged well i'll warn you about that but i didn't know if you had ever seen that movie because i love it I can imagine uh, what it looks like, and it's probably not good. But it, it wasn't. Uh, it doesn't hold up like um, that thing you do uh, these days. That's been a guilty pleasure uh, in quarantine. For well, sure. a movie that gets made in modern times about the past will always yeah. hold up. But when oh. you've got a movie that was made to be modern in 1978, it's yeah. not modern now. No, I know. There's uh, a lot of, uh, even one of my favorite motorcycle documentaries was made like 10 years ago. And just the advancement in technology from then to now, if they had the resources now to, to do what they did, it would be an incredible doc. But uh, yeah, even that didn't age all that well. Are you riding? So, because I, I want to make sure that we talk, we talk bikes. What do you, what do you got for a bike? Have you been out on I've the road? Riding. I've been uh, riding mostly my BMW. I've got a BMW uh, 1200 GS and I got a, a Harley as well. But I've been taking the BMW um, out on the longer trips. 
for this. Uh, I've kind of always taken it on the longer trips, honestly. Anytime I go abroad uh, on a bike or out of state, it's usually on a Beamer. Um, but I fucking love it. Yeah, I, I took it through uh, Tioga Pass. It's kind of a really scenic, um, unbelievable road through Yosemite National Park. And that takes you from the western to the eastern Sierras or, or vice versa. And uh, then you take the 395, which which just rides all down the eastern Sierras back to L.A. And uh, that was a really good rip. And just, I don't know, I've been taking the PCH to the trip after our tour ended with my dad up to um, – up to Big Sur and up to the Redwoods, and he's never seen anything like that. So he uh, obviously really enjoyed it too. And I've never just, been it's there. Good. It's 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 a bucket list thing for me to You've go. Never up. been to the Redwoods? No, I'm from the East oh, Coast, God. man. Like I, I can't just get on my bike and go see Redwoods in New England. It just doesn't work no. that way. I mean, they're only they only exist in that section of California. Yeah. Um, that's probably, honestly, I've been a lot of places on the motorcycle. That's probably the coolest place to go. It's just so different from anywhere else in the world. I went on a trip years ago, and um, if you Google, like, top 10 motorcycle rides in the world, this yeah. is on there. But riding the Cabot Trail in Nova Scotia. I'm sure that's awesome. It is Un, I mean, from here, you either got to go up through the, the north eastern coast of Canada. Well, you got it's you got to go there on a boat, or you got to go up around right. the Acadian forest and and down around. So we took the ferry from southern Maine to the the southernmost tip of Nova Scotia, and then took the bikes all up and around. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if we're talking bucket list trips, you got to put the Cabot that Trail. Is- it's it's breathtaking. It's definitely been on. Uh, it's been in some conversations with my, my dad and I about doing that because he's obviously still in Albany, um, New York, and uh, yeah, we've definitely talked about riding Nova Scotia several times. But we've we've checked a couple of the good ones off the list though too. So is that where you get your love of the bikes from? Is that your dad's a rider too? It was a weird thing. I was working on. Um, there was a, a movie with Bradley Cooper, Ryan Gosling, Ava Mendez, and Ray Liotta that came out that was shot in my hometown called The Place Beyond the Pines. And, and Ryan Gosling plays like a motorcycle bank robber, dirt bike bank robber. And that like really caught my attention. And then at the same time, I was working on Sons of Anarchy. Um, and I'm just around these sick bikes all the time. And I was like, and I, I went up to a motorcycle cop that you know, they do like traffic control on, on set. And, uh, I said to this cop who's become a really good friend of mine, much older than me. Um, I was like, I'm thinking about getting a bike. Like, what do you think? And I was expecting him to say, absolutely not, you know, not safe, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, everybody should fucking have a motorcycle. The world would be a better fucking place if you had a motorcycle. And it's I was true. Like, really? You're a lot more courteous when you're on a motorcycle in traffic yeah. than you are in a car. So he, uh, gave me the complete opposite uh, answer than what I was expecting. And uh, yeah, shortly after I bought the Harley and, and then uh, shortly after that, I went on a trip in Italy uh, where my buddy and I, we rented BMWs and we did Italy and Croatia and that just like opened up a whole new world for me of, of travel. So uh, that's where it, it was just a domino effect that was, I couldn't, I couldn't hold it off anymore. So. Yeah, once once you get a taste of it, it's it's like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. And hiking honestly has become that sort of thing too. There's like a crazy sense of accomplishment when you, you know, finish something that seems, you know, undoable, like a twenty mile hike or something. And they really go hand in hand nicely with each other because you're traveling two beautiful places and then you're on foot where you couldn't be on a bike and uh it's they're just there's a lot of good good in this world to see, and uh, I want to see it all. So, well, you can see it from fifteen thousand feet if you take me up on the offer I gave you the last time I saw you to go skydiving with me. <laughs> that might be that might be my breaking point. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my dad one year got me a, a certificate to go skydiving um, back home. You didn't go? Well, it's a funny story. I, I didn't go. Uh, I don't know why I didn't go that summer, but the following summer I was planning on going and the guy I was supposed to go with wound up killing somebody and he's in jail now. Shut up. Yeah, not, he didn't kill him skydiving. Well, I I didn't think that's how it happened, but. 
Well, if you ever want somebody to go skydiving with you, I won't kill anyone on the way there. Oh, perfect. And then I'll go with you. Okay. Well, we'll have to make sure we don't go after a war room so we don't drink and drive. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. We'll, we'll, yeah, no war room. Like we'll go on the weekend. We'll have like three days to sober up. We'll be totally fine. Perfect. Uh, so I want to remind everybody one more time about all of the details about the Viper Room show. It's Lockdown Live at the Viper Room. It's happening uh, next Friday, July 24th. It's 1030 on the East Coast. You got to get tickets, but they're only $9.55. And it's dirtyhoney.veeps.com that you can go and get the tickets. And then, of course, you can follow you guys on all your social handles at Dirty Honey Band. And uh, Mark, I'm so grateful that you joined us in the war room. You're welcome back anytime. The war Thank room you. peeps love it when we have people to hang out with and talk to. And, um, you know, I want to have you on the podcast eventually as well. And there's lots of crazy stuff going on. We're, we're holding this whole rock scene in New England together, man. Like just losing love AAF it. isn't going to mean we're all going to get scattered to the winds. We're, we're all still here. Well, there's two originals that come to mind. Um, just when I think of Northeastern radio personalities and you were definitely one of them and i'm not sure i'm sure you're familiar with a guy named jackie bam bam out of philly yep and um you two strike me as kindred spirits um <laughs> so yeah i hope both of you guys are well but yeah i hope you're hanging in there it fucking sucks about af but uh we're gonna you're doing, you're we're doing, doing okay man we're doing okay and the and part of why i'm doing okay is that all of the bands um Everybody that was there with me along the way uh, from 22 years ago, 25 years ago, last year, whatever, all the bands, when it all happened, said, wherever you go, we're coming with you. And you said that and your band said that. And here you are. So I'm really grateful that you guys have uh, been so supportive. And I know that once things kind of get back to whatever normal is going to be, that uh, you guys are going to be back out on the road again. And I look forward to being able to have cocktails for real instead of virtual cocktails in the war room. You, def- you definitely will. I'll have uh, I'll have some Casamigos waiting for you. Oh, when, uh, hell yeah. Now you're talking. What are you drinking now anyway? It looks like you're having a Moscow Mule. Yeah. When I got the copper oh, mug, cool. it's Moscow Mule. So nice. we're working on inventing. I'll tell you this quick story and then I'll let you go. Uh, we're working on inventing a cocktails in the war room cocktail. And... Uh, the story goes, and everybody in the war room, it's one of our little inside jokes. Uh, one night when we were in here, I had a couple drinks in me and started telling stories about when I was embedded overseas. And when I was embedded with U.S. troops in Afghanistan, um, I was on a base in downtown Kabul, and it was a fairly substantial base with multiple countries' troops all there. And they had a little marketplace and all kinds of stuff kind of inside the perimeter of the base. And one of the things they had was a massage parlor. And if you were a soldier and you went to the massage parlor and you asked for the blueberry cobbler. (laughs) I can only imagine. Yeah, you can't imagine. So all of the guys I was embedded with. I had a blueberry cobbler. (laughs) (laughs) So all of the guys were begging me to go in there and ask for the blueberry cobbler because they wanted to know what would happen if I went in there and asked for it, which I never did. Um, Come on, we I'm, all know you did. <laughs> <laughs> so we have decided that the War Room official cocktail is going to be blueberry the cobbler. blueberry cobbler, and we're coming up with the drink recipe. So the next time we're together, when we get the drink recipe finalized, we'll sit down with some blueberry cobblers. It sounds pretty easy to me. Just muddle some mint and some blueberries into some blueberry uh, vodka some and, and whatever. Yeah, you yeah. Have a- Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, it's got to be in the right glass, though. And like, yeah. you know, it's a war room drink. So like, do we got to throw a bullet in there? Like, we got to come up with something to make it a signature war room cocktail. So if you get any ideas, you Speaking let us know. I just got this hat and it came with a little bullet hole already. I don't know how they did that. Shut up. Really? Yeah. Can you imagine if it's your job at the hat place to just sit out there with a 22 and blow holes in people's hats? be awesome that would be amazing what do you do i shoot shit all day that's my job i would love to have that job that wouldn't suck at all mark thank you so much for hanging out in the war room with us tonight there's the details guys write it all down make sure you watch dirty honey live next friday night july 24th 10 30 p.m on the east coast get your tickets dirtyhoney.veeps.com support these guys 
They have been amazing and they are one of the bands that we knew was going to take over 2020 and now we're just going to press pause and let you take over 2021 instead. We'll still take 2020. We'll, we'll be all right. Yeah, we'll you're just going to do it virtually. That's all. Yeah, we'll, we'll do we'll do a two year uh, takeover instead of a one. That's right. And so. my invite still stands. Next time you come to New England, if you want to let me throw you out of a plane, I'll totally do it. <laughs> That'll be fine. I have my goggles. Uh, I got my goggles I wear right here. Yeah, there you go. Them. Perfect. All right. Perfect. I don't think you're going to be worried about what's on your eyes when they throw you out of the plane. No. No. I'm sure I won't. I'll be worried about uh, bringing an extra pair of pants and underpants. So <laughs> you wouldn't be the first one to shit your pants. Yeah, no. But I'll take you up on that. All right. Will you please right. uh, pass along my love to the rest of the guys in the band as well? I will. Great seeing you. It great was great to you. see you too. Thank, Thank you so you. much. All right. Take care. All right. We'll see you later. Bye. Yeah. There he is, Sidney Crosby lover Mark LaBelle from Dirty Honey, who was on Cocktails in the War Room on Tuesday night, July 14th. In the description of this After Action report, there are links to find Dirty Honey online. There's a link to my YouTube channel so you can go and watch the full episodes of Cocktails in the War Room, especially if you don't have Facebook. And you can check out the corresponding playlist. Every episode of the Mistress Carrie podcast and every After Action report comes with a custom playlist so that you can enjoy all of the music that got talked about and that includes some Dirty Honey and some Aerosmith this week. New episodes of the Mistress Carrie podcast come out every Wednesday. We announce who that guest is going to be the Tuesday night before in Cocktails in the War Room. And if you hit subscribe, all of these bonus episodes that you're going to be getting are going to get sent right to your phone. Because the After Action reports aren't going to be the only bonus episodes coming. I got a lot of plans. Thanks so much for checking out the podcast. Don't forget to leave five-star reviews if you don't mind and leave your comments. And I'll see you in the War Room every Tuesday night at 8.30. Boston time, of course. To celebrate joining Pantheon Podcasts, Rock Camp, the podcast, the official podcast of Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp, is giving away a guitar signed by Mike Portnoy of Dream Theater, Marty Friedman, formerly of Megadeth, and legendary shredder Zach Wilde, plus our rock star counselors like Vinny Apice, Monty Pittman, and more. To enter to win, simply follow, rate, and review our podcast on your preferred platform, and that's all you have to do. For more information, go to rockcamp.com forward slash podcast.